Oops. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> no. Okay. Bad, bad, bad start. <laughs> okay. No, it's not even the first vlog that I'm doing. That's, yeah. I've done a few vlogs. You will not find them on my channel anymore because it's from a year ago or something. And then I suddenly stopped filming. Yeah, it's stupid to let them be on my channel so let's just start anew so, i'm katya i will be the host of this diet in heaven podcast which sounds so strange i've been wanting to do this podcast for so long really it's been on my planning for years now never got to it always too scared to do so. Never the right... How do you say that? Motivation. Motivation. No, yes. And also the, the trust part in yourself. Thinking that you're good enough to do this. You know? That. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's time. I want to make Diet in Heaven something. Which brings me to my second point. I have a planning. <laughs> I actually made some notes about uh, this podcast, even though I know for myself it's going to go everywhere because I'm just that chaotic. I'm that chaotic creature that... yeah. So died in heaven. Um, it took me a while to figure out what to do with died in heaven. I love the name, by the way. Died in heaven and then died with the dying wool dying process that kind of died of course i mean otherwise it would be a very cruel podcast but uh no i love that name came up with it and it stuck so what am i going to do with died in heaven or what are the plans for 2022 man that sounds strange 2022 when i first started died in heaven i was so unsure about what i wanted to do with it I didn't have a niche, I was just, like they say, throwing spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Nothing stuck. So, uh, yeah, now I know. So, something that the past year has been very important to me and has been a thing is... I'm European. To me, it feels like most of the crafting world, knitting, crocheting, spinning, whatever, is or in America or in the United Kingdom. Here in Europe, it's more hidden. It's not as obvious. It's not as big as, as America and the UK are. So, when Brexit came along, and we were suddenly on our own here in Europe, I came up with this idea to start a huge database with all wool dyers in Europe, uh, sorted by country, um, the same with pattern makers. And I, in 2022, I told myself that I wanted to support solely European crafters maybe on a monthly basis choose a country and order something in that country from a well-known or, or lesser known wool dyer and i so hope <laughs> that i achieve the plan that they are willing to cooperate and maybe i can do some interviews with them and i can bring them in a spotlight we will see which direction this uh, this is going. But that's what I want to do. Okay, for now. Because I'm not going to uh, be able to do this in January already. 
I'm too late for that. Yeah, kind of forgot that. No, not forgot, but yeah, it will be February. I will be using January to find a dyer in February. And hopefully their package will arrive before February. So I can start them. Okay. For now, I have some of my own projects that I'm working on. Maybe let's show that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. On the table. There. More there. Can't show you right now. But I have two sweaters. Oops. <laughs> so I was analyzing this uh, sweet sweater. And this is what is happening. This is already the second rinsing water. Typically a dye job gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can probably say that in the 16 years I've been hand dyeing wool, that's the first time that happened to me. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. That's a good track record. Yeah. But okay, that's what's been happening right now so now i'm going to solve that because i don't want to put the sweater on any of my children that will color them green <laughs> huh? <laughs> so i basically just start rinsing and rinsing and washing and washing i even use some dish soap instead of wool soap and of course, I have some. Where's your mama? A potion! Oh, the cat is with you! <laughs> Hi, catty! <laughs> oh, he loves the cat. But okay, here is mom washing and rinsing and washing and rinsing until the water is clear. Look at that! Five more rinses later, and the water is almost clear. This is some residue from the last washing thing. I'm pretty happy with this. With this I can live. So afterwards, a new lanolin bath because all the lanolin is washed out already. Um, and then on to blocking. Laying around that are blocking right now, which means I put them in a lanolin bath for some extra wool care. And afterwards I lay them flat and with pins and needles I put them in their rightful shape. I do this with everything I make. What else did I finish? I finished both of these yesterday, I think. Soon the, uh, sewn the buttons on it. So, at first I have... I thought you did that one like two days ago. Two days ago? Yeah. Oh, Atlanta, <laughs> please. <laughs> Okay, so I have this one, which is the Pippi baby jacket pattern from Frankie Brown. So, love this pattern. This is the, I think, third, third one that I make from it. Probably, yes. This one I used a size bigger than the pattern says. So the pattern comes in two sizes. Uh, 0 to 6 months and 6 to 12 months. This one is a size bigger. So I used... This is what I have left. So I used uh, a knit crate because last year or something or the year before I had a few knit crates coming in from America. I'm not doing that anymore of course after they changed all shipping things everywhere. But this is the ambient sock uh, yarn in Jungle Walk from Vidalama that I had through Knit Crates. It's an 80% merino, 20% nylon. To me, it's too scratchy. I don't understand then that this is a merino-nylon uh, merino combination. Yes, man, it's so scratchy, this one. I wouldn't use this on, the, on its own, not even for my feet. Plus, these colors pull. Hate that. Worst dye job ever if your colors pull. Really. What is pulling? If you need a pattern, 
and all the colors are on top of each other. So instead of having all the colors through each other, you have bands of colors going up. I hate that. Always. So this one pulls. So that's why I made this jacket with it. And it's just perfect. So, very happy. The other sweater that I finished is this one. And no, this is not the normal kind of sweater that I deliver. Not at all. But I had so many little leftover balls. Literally four or five grams or even less. So I all joined those together into two balls. And then I took a strand of each ball, held it double and started knitting. And this is what I got. Literally a leftover yarn sweater thing. Oh, and the buttons. It's another cool story. Yeah. I chose different colored buttons because when you have a project and you need buttons for it, you just take what you have. Mostly I have too much. So I am left with two or three buttons that I can't use for each project. I mostly can't do anything with those, but I keep them because I don't like to throw away stuff. And this time around, they were just perfect together. So now I have a leftover sweater with leftover yarns and leftover buttons. I love it. I just love it. This one is for my three-year-old, for my son. So I have finished two sweaters in the past two days. Very well, but I have other work in progress is going on. So first let's show this one. I've been making the Scandinavian cowl by Wendy D. Johnson. So it's a cowl, double knit. I'm not that far along yet. I'm a lazy knitter, okay? If things don't go flowing around, I easily give up. To me, I'm not a process knitter. I don't knit because I love the process of knitting. No, I knit because I want new garments and accessories and I love how they turn out and that. I'm very impatient too. So things like color work, I have done them in the past. They just don't go fast enough for my life. But with this one I'm trying and I'm learning and I'm yeah that <laughs> So this will be a cowl officially for me but I'm pretty sure in the end it will go to one of my daughters <laughs> knowing me This is also a knit great yarn Um it's the look It's from Vidalana and the name is Linen Jewel. I have it in Midsummer Rose, which is this color. And I had it in, um, what is the other? Sandstones, which is this color. So it's a 50% superwash merino, 30% linen, and 20% silk. Love the yarn, really. It's very nice, nice to work with. I know that not everyone was happy with this yarn, if I read correctly. Um, some batches apparently didn't turn out too well, but I had no problems with it. I'm not working enough on this one, so it is in my active pile right now, because otherwise I put it on the side because other things are going way faster and I do want to finish this. I've been thinking on starting a 30 minute a day rule for myself for this one. So I have to work 30 minutes a day on it. So maybe in the coming week, that's what I'm going to try. Have 
been starting a pair of socks with this yarn. Also knit crate. Yeah, I've been been obsessed with it for five, five, six months or something a while back. And I'm now using the skeins. So also knit crate. This is the Heathered Sock Yarn, also by Vidalana, in the color Toffee. So it's 40% Peruvian Highland wool, 40% merino, and 20% nylon. What is wrong? Camera. The blurring because I came yeah. closer. <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, the pattern I'm making with this is Autumn Fires by La Maison de Saba. That's which means, which is French for the house of Saba. Okay want to continue this too because this has been like this in my pile <laughs> for a few months actually i've been working on <laughs> i have two you didn't know that two monkeys um this is the jacobus jacobus pattern from uh, anita wilshet it's a dutch pattern um so I'm not sure if it's available in English too. Unsure. Love this pattern. I have made this pattern for years. <laughs> yeah. How many did I make over the years? You all have have some and had one in the past. And every time someone gives birth to a baby in the family or with friends or whatever, this is what I give. <laughs> so yeah, I've made this at least 20 times. Um, this will be for my son, probably. My seven-year-old has claimed this. Uh, it's a 100% merino. Yeah. And this is a merino tensel. A smaller size, just one thread of uh, sock yarn. This is double threaded. Okay, so, yeah. Two Jacobuses. I want to finish these this week. They just both need ears and a snout and have filling so that's all they need last i think in my active to go uh pile of things i have a passive one too so i'm one of those people who just keeps continuing casting on things yeah and then i choose the ones i like the most but I've been trying to change a little bit in that. So I've been having this pile <laughs> of works in progress for years. And now I am just have my little bag thingy where I put a few in that I have to finish before I continue with something else. Um, this one is probably, if I'm correctly... I casted this one on in 2015. <laughs> Don't even ask, okay? It's uh, it's the gift wrap romper from uh, Karina Spencer, by the way. Yeah, it's knit in an alpaca silk, which is my favorite yarn. Hand dyed by me, this one. Um, love it so much. Uh, it yeah, needs some arms and another leg and it needs a border and buttons and whatever. This week I got it from my passive pile of work in progresses and put it in my active one. I want to finish this in January. I will be looking to get my European idea going because I really love it. And I really just want to focus on European people that are doing what they are doing and supporting them and whatever. Yeah, that. Okay, guys. See you next week. Let me know what you think about the European idea that I have to really focus on a European uh, wool dyer, etc. And working together with them for a few times a month in, in just focusing on them, putting them in the spotlight a little bit, um, 
that kind of thing. I really, I really like it myself. But uh, let me know what you think. Um, okay. See you later. Bye bye.